Amen. But I tell you what I'm going to ask you to do. Amen. You can move the table back. Amen. Because we've already demonstrated what we need to demonstrate. And I don't want y'all looking at the camera trying to figure out. Amen. When is it going to go up? <laughs> Amen. Let's give God uh, glory for our feast committee. And for our son, my apostle, Greer Blackwell, my favorite son. He's my only son. But he's still my favorite son. Amen. Now let me go ahead with the teaching. For those that are watching, we ask you to share this. Because you know what? You might just learn something. Amen. When we talk about the Holy Spirit, we talk about promises. D, a promise is a promise. And when God makes a promise, Adelaide Laurier, who's here from Raleigh, amen. When God makes a promise, Lenora and Sheila, amen, who's driven in from Lexington, North Carolina. When God makes the promise, Rudd, he makes a promise. And God is not like men that he should make a promise spell and can't keep it. You see, God never does anything, amen. He does not, it may look like that you're going through some things. And I see my brother from Durham that is here. Amen. Hallelujah. But well, you may look like that you're going through some things, but you've got to go all the way back to Genesis to be able to know, again, crystal, that when God makes a promise, it is a promise that will be kept. And this is what he says. We're going to walk through this very clearly, uh, uh, quickly, because, Sharon, we have a whole lot to cover. Amen. It says, now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country. From your family. And sometimes you're going to have to leave your family. Right. Amen. You're going to have to leave some tradition. And you're going to have to uh, leave some beliefs that you had. That you didn't quite understand. Because the truth wasn't in it. Uh -huh. And from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Genesis chapter 12. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you. And make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. This is what his message was to Abraham. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. So I got a notice out here for all witches, warlocks, and principalities, and rulers of darkness. You may come for a short period of time, but I want to let you know your time is up. Because the Holy Ghost has come, amen, to let you know that whatever vex, whatever curse that you put down, whatever you're doing in the dark is going to come to the light. And whatever you whispered in the dark, whatever curse that you spoke, amen, I love, whatever root doctor you went to, whatever voodoo person you went to, whatever palm reader, whatever spiritual that you went to, amen, it's about to break just like that glass did. He says, I will bless who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And this is what's good to me, Stephanie. He says, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So it doesn't matter whether I'm black, whether I'm white, whether I'm brown, whether I'm yellow. It doesn't matter. Because it says all families of the earth. And it, it didn't say what, Mr. Tammy, some families. It said all families of the earth, Fred, would be blessed. So this is the time when Jews and Gentiles can come together. This was the whole part, amen, hallelujah, of God moving in our lives to let us know. It doesn't matter that we come from different backgrounds. It doesn't matter even if we were in different traditional things. But now God is calling us to be one. And you may wonder how is that one going to be? Because in the Tower of Babel, amen, when he told them, Cassandra, amen, I will curse your language. Yep, the Holy Ghost. They were disobedient. They thought they was doing something good, Portia. They thought they was doing something good, Tanya. They thought that they was going to be able to build a place unto the God. Again, they created them. But he didn't tell them to do that. You see, your disobedience, even though it looked like it's a good thing, but if you disobedient to what God told you to do, amen, it's a bad thing. And so what God did was he cursed the language. That they could no longer, when one would say set up brick, they would set up mortar. When one would say set up mortar, they would set up brick. When one said we need this, they couldn't talk. So that was a curse that was put upon the people. Amen? You see, when God does something, he does it for a purpose. And you may feel like that you're going through. And you may feel like that nobody understands you. And you may feel like that you're going through the battle of decision. You may feel like that again, that your heart is broken, that your mind is confused. And you may feel like that you're the only person that's going through. And you may feel pain within you. But I'm here to tell you that if you would let the Holy Spirit of God 
take you over, your mind will be at peace. And you will no longer be frustrated or be confronted with the evil because, again, no man can curse what God has blessed. Help me, Holy Ghost. So when you go from Genesis, you have to go on over. And we know that we came to the book of Ruth. Amen. When Ruth what? Gleaned, again, the corners of the field. Why was this done? Because God in Leviticus, again, chapter 23, established, again, first fruits, shavio, that they would leave something in the corners of the field for the poor. Now we feel like that it's got to be only social services that is helping the poor. But you see, God said that you will have the poor with you always. So if you got more than enough, amen, hallelujah. Because truth be known, there are some things in your house that you have to throw out. Because you can't use them. But as you consider that the poor is waiting, and the poor, again, that God has allowed to be poor. And don't say that you can't be poor because you don't know what you're going to be in what condition before you leave this earth. Amen. Amen. One thing I do know, Shalom. You ain't going to leave here with anything more rude than we put on you. I'm a film director. I ain't never seen a body dress itself. It's the one thing that it equalizes is in death. Every man comes into the world, he's born. But every man also must die. And when we look at the part of Ruth, Ruth was not again a Jew. But she would have been known as a Moabite, and she would have been known as one that did not know. But because Naomi, whose name meant pleasant, turned her name and said, call me Mara. Because, again, I've lost my husband. I've lost my sons. I've even lost the land that was an inheritance to us. Because the men are dead. But you see, God always has a plan. And even in the midst of your trial, even in the midst of what you're going through, even in the midst of all the people saying no, even in the midst of your hurt and your pain, even in the midst of your rejection, if you would just turn to the Lord and return home. You see, she was bitter, but she knew that bonnet that she had to go home. And when she went home not knowing that she was going to have the land, however God provided, see, if you get up and you move in faith, faith is an action word. If you move in faith, God will bring forth the things that are needed. So I'm asking all of you, turn your faith up. There's some things that you can't do. And only God can get you through the crisis that you're in. Only God can heal this nation. We can come up with every type of plan that we think we need to have. But only God, only the Holy Spirit will allow us to speak with wisdom. It doesn't matter how much of a bully I am. It doesn't matter, again, how much I know, Stephanie. <laughs> Do I have wisdom? Just because you know it don't mean you need to say it. And so when we're looking at this thing and we're looking at this country where we are, we begin to say, Holy Spirit, you need to come and get in the midst of the situation. We need you. We need some prayer warriors. We need some people to turn our plate down. We need some preachers to rise up and call for morning and noonday and evening prayer. I'm not talking about prayer once a week. But we need leaders to come together and say, will you pray with me? Forget about my differences. Forget about, again, what I, again, may preach a little differently than you do. Amen? Amen? We're not here to judge each other. God don't judge us. Amen? But we are here to pray together. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen? We are here to call upon God from his promise that he made with Abraham. We are here to say again that we're with this nation for healing. And we're not looking, Lisa, for a band-aid. We're not looking again to talk about this thing for the next two months and that there's not a, a healing. But when we seek God for wisdom, then wisdom will tell us how to deal, Sydney, with the situation. And that's what we got to pray for. We can talk all day long. We can call each other on the phone. We can text each other. We can email. But we must bend our knees and begin to pray. When we look at the situation of Ruth, and Ruth went in before Boaz. But you need to realize she went in because Neoma told her to go in, told her what to do. Our young people, I'm telling you something, listen to some of the older people. They live longer than you live. They have gone through what you went through. Amen. We ain't always been old. There's some things we did foolish, but because we did it foolish don't mean that you got to be a fool because we were. There's some things that you need to learn from the old people. You need to listen to people that talk that are older than you are that can begin to counsel you and talk to you and begin to speak to your heart. You don't know everything. Amen. Amen. 
He said, be angry, but sin not. Amen? Amen. I never thought how close we would touch the king family. The king family would touch us through Martin Luther King's wife. Amen? Coming again, we picked up at the airport. We boarded at Winston. His daughter, Yolanda, stayed in the house with us. We never realized it was such a civil rights. You said, well, he's name dropping. Well, good, catch your name. The thing about it was we never knew, but God always sets up a principle. A principle, again, that you may not know. And so you're looking for people to be called as leaders. You're looking for leadership, but you are leaders. Yes. Speak truth. Yes. Speak it in love. Yes. Speak peace. Yes. Speak joy. And watch God do some of the things that need to be done. We look at the say here, son. When we look at Naomi, amen? And we look at the fact that when she began to advise Ruth, and Ruth went into the field, and she told him, now, you're going to lay down. But I want you to understand that Naomi had changed her name to Bar because she was bitter because of what had happened. But through her advice to give to Ruth, Ruth went in. Yep, the Holy Ghost. And what Boaz told her, women, you ain't got to have your clothes hanging halfway down. Come on now. You ain't got to show all your cleavage. Come on now. Amen. In order for a man to see you. If you got to show your cleavage for a man to see you, you're going to get exactly what you show. Amen. Come on, you're going to get a man that's going to be shallow and preach. understanding who you are. Preach. Come on, preach, man. But I'm telling you, you need to cover up some things. And the man that you desire is going to be a heavenly man. He's going to be a man that's going to see the inner beauty in you. He's going to see what, again, that's inside of you. That man that's looking for you is not looking for something that everybody else can see. Come on, now. Let me preach. this thing. Preach. I don't care if you don't like it, amen. I'm just trying to tell you. Because see, if you got your cleavage all showing and your midriff all showing, you're going to track the man that got his pants halfway hanging down. And I'll say to you men, pull your pants up. Pull your pants up. Nobody need to imagine how your hips look. Nobody need to see how tight your underwear fit. Amen. Because if they do, then they're only looking. And the women ain't looking at one. But the person that's looking at you with your pants down is somebody that want to take you to bed that you don't want to take you. Let me leave that thing alone. This is Pentecost. It's a message of fire. It's a message of truth. I'm not going to stand here and lie to you. Come on, preach. Preach. I'm not going to stand here and be passive. Amen. I'm not going to stand here and see things happen. Amen. And we see it and we don't speak to it. Leadership rise up. Amen. They may not like you, but you ain't got to be the friend. But they'll appreciate you later. You don't walk into a you don't walk into a bank. You don't walk into a job with your pants hanging halfway down and expect that you gonna get the job. Amen. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. When we go on this thing with Ruth, Ruth goes on and does exactly what Naomi. And then Boaz sends. You know, she takes some of the food that Boaz gave her, and she takes it and feeds Ruth, and she takes back again the grain that again that she needs to take back. But God in Leviticus had already said that there would be a gleaning. Even Boaz said, don't, you young man, don't you look at her. Don't you look at her. And you be kind to her. And he was protecting her. Boaz was older than her. But Boaz gave her favor. And that's the way that the land was redeemed. That came back to Naomi and changed Mara back to the original place, Naomi. There are some things that you've been inflicted with. There are some things that you went through. There are some hurt that, again, that was ministered to your soul. There were some things that were said. There were some things that were stolen. But they can't take away what's in your mind and in your heart. Amen. And when you have a bad heart, you got a bad mouth. Oh. And when you got a bad heart, you got bad ears. Because your heart is connected to your ear. And if your heart is hard, your ear will not hear. That's what the Lord is saying. Amen. And I'll say to you that this is the time that you need to have a heart transformation. You need to let the fire of the Holy Spirit begin to direct you into all truth. Because there's another voice speaking. But it ain't the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just because you got a creative idea. But if it doesn't glorify God. Got the Holy Ghost. That's just what it is. It's just an idea. Ruth was married to Boaz. And you have to realize that she became the great grandma of David. Yes. Amen. A woman who was an outsider. Yes. Who said unto her, what? Ruth, your people should be my people. Yes. She saw something in Ruth 
over those years, even though she lost her husband, she went with her mother-in-law. And I'm going to say to you that during the season, there's going to be some unlikely fellowships. It's going to be some unlikely people that are going to join together, hallelujah, because they're going to be joined in the spirit. Yeah. Not in what, again, where people say, church is not a social club. Right. But people are going to be joined in the spirit. You're going to try people by the spirit. You're going to know them by the spirit. This is where God is bringing us to. Some unlikely friends. Some unlikely heroes and unlikely sheroes. Amen? She became an outsider, but yet born. Again, the seed that would pass on to David. Yes. And I believe that if he gave the promise to Abraham, yes. it was still coming through David. Yes. And I believe that what David spoke, turn to Joel chapter 2. It's a little, it's a little lengthy. Amen. Well, we've got 15 more minutes. We can handle this like 15 minutes. Can you do that? You see, we rush in. But we never get understanding. We think we know the Bible, and we don't ask the Holy Spirit to give us revelation. Even us, well, I don't read that before. Yeah, but did you understand what you read? Oh, I understood it. But if you understood it, then read it again. Amen. When I look at again, Joel chapter two, and he begins to say again, "Fear not, O land." He talks about the land being refreshed. But the first thing he did, Doctor Lorraine, is call for repentance. If you don't know how to repent, then you need to ask the Holy Ghost to show you how to repent. And if you get down on your knees and ask God to show you what is it that's in me that's causing my friends an issue. What is it in me, God, most of all, that's got me separated from you? And when you begin to call upon your bad mouth, your bad talk, your gossiping, your whispering, your backbiting, your lying, your gossiping, your deceit, your deception, your way with thinking. You say, I don't do all any of that. Well, you are lying. The truth ain't. Exactly. Exactly. I forgot to add lying spirit. Because everybody got something that you need to get over. I just want to let you know if David, amen, had something he had to get over. Amen. You got something. He was a man after God's own heart. Then you got something to get over as well. But just because you fall don't mean you got to stay there. It says, now thou force said the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Something about the 12 verse, I think. 12 chapter, 12 verse of Joel chapter 2. Rend your heart and not your garments. What he's saying is, I don't want you pretending before me. Don't be getting to church and falling down and crying and wallowing and crying and sobbing and go right on outside the church and cuss somebody out. I don't do that yet, but you, you cried, you wallowed and cried, and you spoke about the Lord, Lord used me, and somebody needed $10, and you told me they couldn't have it. And you had more than enough. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. That's the God that we serve at Joel 2. Amen. And he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he would turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, and we blew the trumpet this morning. Consecrate a fast, and we fasted, what, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Call forth for sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, and gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber, and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priest who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. You see, some of us don't got up with so much unempathy. That we don't know how to ask the Lord to spare your people. Some of us got sons and daughters that need to be spared. And you need to get up in the morning and you need to ask God to spare your children. Because this is the ugly world we're living in. It's a, it's a world filled with lust. It's a world filled with, again, all sorts of things, Mr. Tammy, that we didn't even think of. A person can reach out and touch you with lust on the internet quicker than they can touch you with a the hand. They don't even have to know you to send you something. And you're going to have to find out today that, again, everything that comes to you on the internet is not a blessing. And you need to understand how to use the delete button. Ain't that right, Mr. Debbie Hill? You got to use the delete button because some things that are coming to you, you need to pretend that you didn't see it. You need to ask God to put some blood on your eyes and it'll wash out what you saw. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Let the bridegroom, this is how serious this is. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. He said, you ain't got time to consummate this marriage. 
This thing is for such urgency. And the thing about it is that even with the coronavirus, and I heard people say that were people protesting, they were all out there protesting and know that coronavirus is there. But what about the people that were walking on the beach and that were swimming in the swimming pool and walking everywhere else? But it's easy for us to see somebody else's sin and don't see ours. And so God is calling for truth at this moment. He's calling for us both out of order. Yes, both work. Don't think I condone one and don't condone the other. But what I'm saying to you, before you point your finger at somebody else, you need to realize that you need to point it back to you and say, God, now show me me and who I am. When he talks about fear not, O land, in verse 21, the land is refreshed, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid. Your beasts of the field, for the open passes are springing up, and the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. This is what the refreshing would be. If you would repent, then he will relent. Yes. And I'm calling for every pastor, whether you are on Facebook, whether you are in your church, that you call this nation into repentance. And when you begin to call the nation into repentance, call your members into repentance. After all, that is the word that God spoke. That's what the prophet, again, John the Baptist had to speak was what? Repent. That was his word. Repent and be baptized. What was Jesus' word? Repent. And if, if, if this came from John the Baptist, the forerunner, and then it comes to John the Baptist, then it goes to Jesus, and then Jesus leaves, and then he gives us the Holy Spirit, it should be telling you to do what? Repent. To repent. The word didn't change. And then it says, God poured out his spirit. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 28. I've skipped over some things in order that you can go back and read it, but then I give you the meat of the issue. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old man shall dream what dreams. Your young man shall see visions. And also on my men servant and on my maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days. This is in the book of Joel. People could not quite understand Cassandra, what that meant. Nancy, they didn't quite understand what that meant. I will pour out my spirit. So how can you understand something that has never happened? Even though a prophet may prophesy, you may not understand it all. But when a prophet prophesies, you need to say, if it's Lord, Lord, let it be. Let it be. If it's of you, Lord, let it be. Because if it ain't of the Lord, it won't be. So don't get upset because you can't receive a word. Amen. Amen. Been young before. Amen, Amen Joyce. Had a word to come. I didn't want to accept the word. Because I was having too much fun doing what I wanted to do, D. Amen. I thought I could serve the Lord. Amen. Walking like this. <laughs> I thought I could serve the word portion, serve God, and know the word of God, and read it, and still walk like this. I thought, Jerry, Minister Jerry, that I could just straddle the fence, and just walk like this. But God is calling us to walk circumspectly and upright. No, you're going to fall. Am I saying that again, that there's going to be times when you're not? But I'm saying to you, realize when you ain't in alignment. You need to realize that when what you're doing does not please God. Yes. And God don't want a little bit of you. He wants all of you. And he doesn't want you again to try to show up everything by yourself because nobody corrects yourself. This ain't like taking a driving test. Amen? Amen. You just can't take the test, Miss Gray, and pass it yourself. Somebody got to give you the test. You can't authorize your own test. You can't write what you need to write. What teacher allowed you to write your own test? No, uh, uh that ain't happening. The test that we must go through. And I will show you wonders in the heavens and the earth and blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And the sun should be turned into darkness. This is Joel chapter 2. Read it. Read Joel chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3 when you go home. Sun so turn to Acts chapter 2. Amen. It says, when the day of Pentecost, I want you to understand what the Lord told him. I'm sorry, go back to Luke chapter 24. The last chapter, Luke. I want you to go to that. Ha, Shibu Koraba. Are you learning something? Yeah. I want you to understand how this needle with thread goes through a fabric. And it starts with Abraham. 
Then it goes on with Moses into Leviticus. Then it goes from Leviticus and it goes on into what? Ruth. And then it goes on and demonstrates itself from Ruth to who? To the book of Joel. And then it goes on from the book of Joel. Now the good news. That's what the gospel is, Dr. Maxine. It's the good news. And it goes on when we talk about Luke. He says, even over here in Luke chapter 24, when Jesus himself, had risen from the dead, prophet Ed, and he had risen from the dead in Luke 24, 21, go, go right there, on the road to Emmaus. And they were talking. And they were telling him, he says to them in verse 19, what things? So they said to him, the things that's concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers, oh, listen to that, the chief priests and the rulers. You better go back and read this word. How the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But it says, but we were hoping, say I'm hoping, I'm hoping, that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. And the word redeem means, hallelujah, Janet, prophet is Janet, both of y'all prophets, little Janet and big Janet. When you are redeemed, I want you to understand this thing, you already was on the layaway. <laughs> he already made a down payment on you. And when you put something in the land where it's yours. And all you got to do is just go back and pay for it. And you redeem it. And say, I got, you got your redeeming slip? Yeah, I got my redeeming slip. And they were saying that we were hoping that Israel was going to be redeemed. Indeed, besides all of this, today is the third day since these things happened. Thursday. Evening. <laughs> Friday, Thursday. Three days. Because it's still Sabbath. This is our resurrection day. And then he says to them, oh foolish one, verse 25, and slow of heart to believe, oh foolish one, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now, verse 44, then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you. While I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And then it says he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. You see, you may not understand something until God is ready to open up for you. You may read it ten times, but until God is ready to reveal it to you, you will not understand what you reveal. That's why he said that again, hallelujah, Jesus revealed to them what it was, but that's why... The Kari, that he sent the Holy Spirit so that when you open the Bible and you ask the Holy Spirit, I don't quite understand what I'm reading here. Can you give me a little bit of understanding of what it is? Then the Holy Spirit can speak to you and you ain't got to come to me to ask me what it means. Doesn't mean that I ain't here to instruct you when you have studied it. Amen. Hallelujah. But when we come together and reason, yes, God will explode the meaning, right? But he will start with you. Amen. And you've got to understand that he starts with you first. You've got to be drawn. God is drawing you, but we're not reading the scriptures. Amen. We want everything to be given to us. We want to come to church and be fed. Take out the pacifier out of your mouth. Amen. It's time you take up the spoon and start eating some food. Stop asking for everybody to feed you. And then you don't know how to take what you're fed with and go forward with it. A baby doesn't stay a baby forever. So stop acting like a baby. Stop acting like you got a pacifier. Stop whining. And start eating the word of God. Then you'll know how to treat your brothers and sisters. Then when they come up and somebody's whining, somebody's got a dirty diaper, you won't be trying to say again, I don't understand it because you used to stay just like they did. Y'all might not like this, but it's all right. It says, thus it is written, thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Here it is, verse 47. And the repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send what? The promise. What did he give to Abraham? A promise. Come on now, y'all. A promise of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you endue with power from on high. 
And you need to understand the promise is capitalized, Mr. Jerry. Means that again, it's not the promise as you would just say that I make to you. But the promise is something that again, that he promised from the very beginning that was about to come, amen. See, revelation was about to show up. The thing that they did not understand was about to come. He says, go what? Into the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. You see, <laughs> I believe little Jenny. I believe Lenora. I believe that we're going to have to come to church. And they used to have, you know, we have a 24-hour prayer. Time, but I believe we're going to have to come to church some nights and we're going to have to just pray all night. Can you understand? I didn't understand. I was like, it don't take all that, D. But it take all that. It takes all of that. It's going to take some more. What has happened is we relax, Mr. David. We as leaders began to relax. And I apologize to a generation of people because we got soft in the church. I apologize because we wanted to rush in and think that, again, it was about the program and how well it was done, and we forgot about the word. We began to judge the crowd and began to deal with the people about what their seats would endure yeah. and how long they would listen to us instead of really speaking to the ear yes. and asking the ear to hear. Yeah. We got the prophets of the center. We start talking about, amen, hallelujah, having church, but never did. Yeah. Come on, y'all. It ain't going to be church as usual. It'll be different. It won't be no grandstanding. Because spirit will set your butt down. The spirit will let you know you you grandstanding. You ain't in me. You in you. Let me leave this thing alone. Help me out go. Don't worry. You got the fivefold. You got the fivefold going to tell you when you in you. Hallelujah. Let me leave this thing alone. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So he told him to go. Thank you, son. My son is right on it this morning. So he told him to go, and he talked about the day of Pentecost. You see, what he said there in Acts chapter 1, real quickly. Acts chapter 1. This is the needle pulling the thread. And being assembled together with him, he commanded them, verse 4, not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the what? Oh, the promise of the Father did. The promise of the Father at lay. Which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not so many days from now. A lot of times we went into water, but we came up the same way we went in. Only thing is that we were wet. That's the only thing that was different. Going down in the water is not just about an outward showing. But it's about God doing something to your heart. And the only way that you can have a heart transformation is, is tell the Lord, come fire, burn inside, I'm wet. But burn my heart. And anything that's in it that shouldn't be in it, any thought that's in my mind that shouldn't be there, burn it up. Holy Spirit. And so that's what he told him about the promise. And he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and the end of the earth. Here it is again. You're supposed to be a witness on your job in the restaurant. Y'all be walking around and say, oh, I don't want me to talk to that person about the Lord. And the Lord don't told you to say something. And you heard the Holy Spirit say, say, invite him to church. But you didn't invite him to church because you was too afraid. You was really too afraid to let him know that you was a Christian. And you didn't want them to stop inviting you to the parties. And you didn't want them to stop inviting you over to that house to dinner because they thought that you was a freak because you spoke in tongues. But let me tell you what happened. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, I want to let you understand that 120 of them went in the room. I want to let you understand it just wasn't for men, but it was for women as well. I want to let you understand that the disciples were there, who was the apostles, but even the apostles knew that they had to come in. So don't think just because you've been called as a pastor that you know it all. Don't think that you ain't got to bow your head. Don't think that you ain't got to be sanctified. Don't think that you ain't got to ask the Holy Spirit to clear you up. Come on, man. Come on. Yes. Yes. Because you'll get in a spirit of self-righteousness. Yes. And the next thing you know, you have fell under the unction of your own mind. And then it goes on and says, coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost is fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So when they came together, body, it wasn't coming into the church. And one said, I can't believe she did that. <laughs> May the Lord cause your tongue to cleave to the roof of your mouth. Before you would curse yourself or curse somebody else. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. You can't see the wind. That's right. 
but you can see the effects of it in the tree. You can't see the wind, but you can see a broken glass to let you know what the wind did. And it's the same way with the Holy Ghost. You may not be able to see it, oh, but you can feel it when it gets down into your soul. You may not be able to see it coming, but you can feel the unction of the Holy Ghost turning up the volume of your hearing. You can feel it when it tells the prophet to prophesy. You can feel it when the evangelist leaves her or his seat and get up and begin to get out into the community. And that's truly what's wrong now. A lot of people that we saw last night need to be evangelized. Oh, no, I'm not diminishing hurt. I'm not diminishing pain. I'm not diminishing the protesters. But they got hurt hearts, and the only person that can heal their heart is the Holy Spirit. The only person that can tell them, again, that we're going to walk into boardrooms. Amen? And we're going to have wisdom on how to do it.